Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct View. Sam I.B. began you during political commentary for the Media Speaks. You might know me from Teddy Stick Blasting News, uh, the Conservative Daily Post, perhaps. Uh, welcome aboard. Something new happening here. If I look like my head's on a swivel, I still don't have a camera that doesn't suck, but I do have a phone that looks like it doesn't suck. So we're going to see how it records. Hello over there. Of course, Facebook and Media Speaks, I'm still in this camera with. Um, and I was just telling my listeners on Facebook the absolute importance to sharing the information. I can't stress to you enough how important that is, because that is now the only thing, pretty much, that gets us out where people can see it. Friends, I'm going to get straight into the news. Uh, behind me, there is no fact cam anymore. I'm sharing the uh, video on the media speak, so I'm able to share the screen share. So if you do want to see the actual links, otherwise I'll just give them. Swedish professor slammed for saying men and women are biologically different. Uh, Prison Planet shared this is on Sputnik. Following accusations, not the rocket Sputnik, following accusations from students, a professor at one of Sweden's a leading academic institutions has refused to back down from his confidence in biological differences between men and women, sticking to his belief that gender cannot be viewed as a social construct alone. Now let's pause here. A lot of people are going to say, Sam, you're the biggest hypocrite in the whole world. Because, like many men, you have a lot of lady friends who may not be perfectly straight. I have no problem with that. I myself am straight, but I have male friends that aren't straight. Here's my problem. This doctor is speaking about biological truths. Now, we can all, me, 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 what makes a man, what makes a woman all day long. My personal belief is that if you have a penis, then you are male. If you do not have a penis, you do not get to call yourself male and have it be biologically true. You may feel like a man, but that doesn't mean that you are one. I may feel like a political commentator, but some of you might not think that I am one. I hope that's not the case, although I'm sure it is with a few. My point is there are, in fact, biological facts and absolute truths. You cannot change your DNA with a sex change operation. It may make you feel good, and you have every right to feel good. That's wonderful. But the point is that it doesn't actually change anything. This doctor got in trouble for saying that. And again, I'm not attacking women. I, I don't know who her name is. Sports fans, Steve, Christian, somebody help me here. Sports fans, uh, who was the lady that kicked the field goal? And I um, rocked it when her team needed it. I think it was for a high school or college. I'm going to say a high school game. Um, awesome. Okay. If you're somebody who is gay, I don't care. I would only care is if you tried to say that you were biologically the same as the gender that you hope to be. Because scientifically speaking, that simply isn't the case, even if you want it to be. That is the premise for my, what I'm bringing this story to your attention for. Because we're getting to the point in society where we can't speak the truth about anything. Because any truth that we might say might be misconstrued as hate by some groups. So, uh, I'm a Christian. So, if somebody decides, pretty poor example of one, I granted. I'm a Christian. So, if somebody decides that they want to attack Christians, or attack maybe my belief, I should say, and they do so and say, hey, you know, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with that. I got news for you, friends. That doesn't mean that that person hates me. We need to get over that mindset. We really do. If someone doesn't happen to agree with me or they say, you know what, you shouldn't have long hair, you look like an idiot. That's not hate. And I think that's important to realize. Every time somebody doesn't agree with somebody, it goes straight to this, oh, he hates me thing. He hates me thing. Get over that already. And, uh, anyway, listen to the rest of this story. Gourmand uh, Heslow, a professor of neuropsychology at Lund University, whose name I'm sure I hacked up, has been asked 
for an apology over transphobic and anti-feminist views inconsistent with the so-called value base, the Swedish website Academic Rights Watch has reported. Heslow has for many years held a course in heritage and environment at Lund University's medical program. In his course, the professor cites empirical research supporting the notion that differences between men and women are biologically founded and cannot be regarded as social constructs alone which comes in stark contrast to the trend in gender studies. Now, let me point something out there. The word alone says a lot. He is not saying in all instances, okay? If somebody, if a guy decides he wants to be a girl, that decision is between him and God. And if he doesn't believe in God, then Darwin, to him and a fish, I don't know. My point is, that is up to him. And the same applies for ladies. That is up to them. However, if we get to the point where teaching simple science and simple truth is hate, then we have a problem. For instance, I, I think there's a very good chance in my family that there is a Mayan Indian in my blood. Because my... Um, I don't want to sound like Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren. I don't know. I've never been DNA tested. I don't think anybody should give me any free money because I might be part Indian. My bigger point being that um, my grandmother was from Mexico. And a lot of people have pointed out over the years that I don't particularly look that Mexican. And a lot of it might be because it's a Mayan Indian. But due to divorce and things like that in my family, I'm really not sure it happened. Uh, a divorce, I should say, on my dad's side. I'm not really 100% sure if I am or not. But the point is, if someone has a discussion like that, there's someone somewhere that's going to be offended that somebody might think they're Indian when they're not. Or any discussion about anything that has anything to do with that now can't be had because certain people's feelings could get somebody else in trouble. That is a very slippery slope. I'm not saying we need to be rude to one another. I don't think that's going to accomplish anything. But I don't think that just talking to somebody needs to be the huge problem that it's become. Listen to this. Following complaints from a feminist student who found Henslow's course to be an expression of his personal anti-feminist agenda, Christopher Larson, the chairman of the program, Board of Medical Education, summoned Henslow for a meeting within the management team. Maybe he should have said that he thought she had a personal bias against him, because I guess feelings are now enough to get somebody called to the office. Henslow was asked to distance himself from the two claims. Gay women have a male sexual orientation, and another one about transsexuality, whether it's sexual orientation is a matter of definition, which he refused to do. I think I have done enough to explain and defend my choice of words. At some point, one must ask for a sense of proportion among those involved. If I were to become acceptable for, if it would become acceptable for students to record lectures in order to find compromising formulations, and then involve faculty or staff with meetings and long letters, we should let go of the medical education altogether. The fact that the situation has gone this far is because most students do not have this attitude. And again, the attitude is that you, you're not allowed to point out differences. And th this is a huge problem. Um, this could even hamper certain medical breakthroughs if for some reason certain areas of study turn off a large number of people because it's viewed as a biased against someone or deviant. For instance, um, they're making leaps and bounds in what they can do with testicular cancer. And you've heard ladies say, well, they're not doing as much for ovarian cancers. Those same kinds of breakthroughs aren't happening. Unfortunately, they're correct. However, massive breakthroughs are happening, thank God, in breast cancer. More so than it is with men who get cancers of that particular lymphatic region. Why? Because doctors don't care about men? Because doctors hate the male lymphatic system? Or could it be because biological differences make some of the treatments we have more effective for certain genders than others? We don't necessarily want it to be that way, but it is.
if we start eliminating that kind of conversation, then I think we've put ourselves at a grave disadvantage. All right, guys, uh, those of you that don't like me to stay political for the entire show are going to be delighted. Um, I don't know about you, but this has been like the worst year of my life, as in within the last 14 months, particularly almost to the day, the last 12 months have been horrible. So it's perfect for Halloween. Um, this gets us into the Halloween season, as it were, and uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm happy that Carlo joined in. Because he he and I agree on one uh, fundamental important thing here, and that is that if it's hip hop, it sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, there are exceptions. Steve Grant is astounding. Diesel Automatic is astounding. Elias, who raps with him, astounding. That's rare. Okay, let me let me explain to you what suck is. Drake, Beyonce, pretty much Lil Anything, Pitbull, um. Just absolutely dreadful, mind rot music. And this, this vocal running, oh, baby, is horrendous. And it's in like every song in the world now. So we know it's hell for the ears, but have we taken any time to think about whether or not it might be hell in a different way? This caught my attention, and I knew I was going to put it on the show for all of you that don't like the uh, all political shows I do, because I've been mixing them up to keep everyone happy. That way you can argue about different things instead of just arguing about one. Um, well, we'll start with Bay House, since, we, uh, since I mentioned her first. I had her second, but we are going to change the order of that. Executive decision number one. Uh, Beyonce's drummer has come out here. Um... Former Beyonce's former drummer claims that the singer molested her with dark magic and extreme witchcraft. Now, I'm you can draw your own conclusions about whether or not her witchcraft was authentic or not, or whether she was just mad or perhaps driven mad by Beyonce. Lord knows her music would be enough to do it. Uh, for those of you that like her music, you'd probably agree that her attitude would be enough to do it. She's not a particularly nice person when you see her in interviews. All of that said, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a level of uh, occultism in this because in order for music so bad and so talentless to get so much money put behind it, there would have to be some kind of a catalyst that would move people in that direction. And uh, I think Satanism very well could be, uh, it could be one of those things. It's, it would explain a lot. Particularly when you see people with much more talent that get absolutely nowhere. And uh, I, I think everybody in every city can name 20 of those kinds of people. Well, in order to bring us into the season, as it were, let's entertain some off-the-wall thoughts. For those of you who like to hit fake news, I said thoughts. A woman who once worked as a drummer for Bayhouse claims that the singer is wrapped up in the practices of extreme witchcraft and has been using her spells to run surveillance and control her finances. And now she wants a restraining order against Bay. According to bizarre, very bizarre court documents obtained by The Blast, Kimberly Thompson says she used to work for Bay House. I worked for her as a drummer in her band for seven years. Now, again, um, I don't think anybody needs banned from any religion at all. I'm also not going to go ahead and say that this woman is definitely right, that you should put spells on her or something. But let's say that the story is half true. This is story like number 70 that has talked about the really dark things that these people are into. And I don't personally care what someone is into. I do my best to try to encourage people one way or the other, but the choice is ultimately each person's to make. However, Beyonce and people like her tend to be the Pied Piper for a lot of people. And I, I'm, this is coming from somebody who went to junior high school with Marilyn Manson. Eh, Listen to his music. But you need to have some kind of a grounding in truth before you know, you're exposed to some things. Luckily, my parents were very good at separating fact and fiction for me as a young child. For those who aren't, and I'm not saying ban her, but for those who aren't, some of what Beyonce and these people are doing could be very, very 
dangerous for a young person. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that any more than I would say that if somebody grew up, li- and then I'll go back to uh, the 80s, uh, if someone grew up listening to Slayer, Without somebody to properly show them what fact is and what fiction is, if they were just to find the music out of nowhere by themselves, I gotta plug this in, then that I, I, I imagine could be more than just a little bit dangerous. Again, I'm plugging this in and you guys are gonna jiggle around for a minute. I thought it was already plugged in, but alas, it was not. So I think the most important thing that we can probably do is to evaluate exactly what it is that this person is saying and maybe take it with a grain of salt, but I think it's still nonetheless quite interesting. She claims that for some reason, Bay has started a campaign of harassment against her that excludes extreme witchcraft, dark magic, and magic spells of sexual molestation. She also claims that the Lemonade Star murdered her kitten. Now, again, I highly doubt that Beyonce goes around murdering people's kittens. That seems a bit extreme. But, again, we're going to assume that even half of what this lady has said, uh, maybe she threatened an animal? Who knows? Thompson believes Beyonce has been tapping her phones, that seems a bit extreme, and controlling her finances. Well, that probably is. Uh, It's unclear why Thompson believes the singer is allegedly doing this to her, but she's adamant that it all stems from Beyonce. We did some research on Thompson, and according to interviews and reports, it appears she is the drummer that performed with Beyonce as part of an all-female band. She's also released several albums on her own record label and played the 8G band on The Late Night with Seth Meyers. She was also in an episode of Mean People, I guess. Um, Again. I I drive anything short, anything that has to do with, I think you put a spell on me or the devil made me do it, that's foolishness. However, I think there's a lot of reports that have put a lot of credence to the fact that uh, those who have embraced very dark themes as a lifestyle choice have a great deal of influence over the society. And I'm not in favor of banning anything. If you ban anything, you simply make it more popular. Okay, some people will look at the skull and bones or the H.R. Giger picture behind me. That's artwork. That's fantasy. I don't go around putting hexes on people that don't like me. And those that do, even if the hexes are not real, those that do are exposing something very selfish and or vindictive within themselves. Therefore, I think that they're speaking to millions of people every day, those millions of people would be very wise to take what they're saying with that information having been absorbed prior to hitting play. That's why you listen to the correct news, ain't it? All right, staying with our Halloween theme. Listen to that. You're going to listen to that twice, won't you? Um, Post Malone cursed after messing with most haunted object before a string of unfortunate events. Um, Now, let me point out that if you don't know who Post Malone is, you're kind of lucky, but we're going to go with it. Dreadful. Uh, Post Malone has apparently been cursed by a haunted object, which might explain his run of bad luck lately. From the midair emergency, which saw his private jet make a landing without its wheels a couple of weeks ago, to the car crash and home invasion where gun-toting thieves yelled for the rapper when breaking into his old house, the star hasn't been having a good, the best time. And in a video released today, the post might be messing with the wrong demon. Now again, am I saying that it's definitely demons doing it? No. But there are a lot of Christians who believe that if you speak about something often enough, that something will, in fact, become tangible reality. Some people in the Word of Faith movement believe that, but even those who do not do believe in the precepts of the Bible where it talks about asking and talking about things in the name of God. Those who are not Christians but may be familiar with the law of attraction or the secret. Buddhists, I don't remember what it's called, and it's, uh, it looks like an eye chart, but they have a word for the belief that if you look at a rock long enough and believe it to be water, it will become water. Um, again, they're not saying anyone's ever done that. They're just saying that some such things are possible. 
Who knows if it is or not? But here's what I'm going to say. With so many different people from so many different religions that were not interacting at the same time, for them all to have come to the same conclusion independently, without there being any truth to it, seems more than mildly unlikely. If anyone's still listening to this, let me know if you would agree with that sentence. I think you probably would. Um, hanging out with Ghost Adventure star Zach Baggins at his haunted museum sounds spooky enough already. The rap star rapper can be seen touching the shoulder of Zach, who is touching the object that is normally hidden behind a protective glass. Um, he's holding a beer, making it appear that they're enjoying a low-key social hangout in the museum as you do before the two flee the room. In the video obtained by TMZ, he had grabbed Zach as the two of them ran out of the room, perhaps knowing that they had broken a curse. Perhaps the object in question is a dubuck box. Um, it's Yiddish for malicious spirit. So they were playing with a malicious spirit box, which, you know, when you're already a millionaire, you might not want to roll the dice and take a chance of losing that. Um, We'll get to that in a minute. And uh, inspired a horror flick, of course, called The Possession, which is totally cool. Not, it says. Zach told the publication that the happening went down in June, which makes sense in the timeline. And we guess curses take a few weeks to really kick into gear. Well, movies say. The star said that the, the post touching his shoulder as himself touched the box was enough to trigger the curse. It hasn't been the best of time. Of course, it goes over what it says at the beginning of the story about the break-ins and that. Now, let me give you a personal story that I would be willing to put out there as a warning along the same lines without saying I didn't touch any magic boxes or anything like that. But, um, hello, all of you who joined, I will say this. Um, I was in an argument with someone once, and I made the statement that if I capitulated to what it was that they wanted, that everything I swore on, everything that I cared about, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? Soon after, I ran into the year that I just told you about. My wife and I have separated. I'm not with my record label anymore. Uh, the place I worked for stopped buying as many articles as they did when it wasn't an election year. There's the earlier Facebook problem. I The van I drive, I rely on for part of my income, has broken its frame and died. Um, my taxes have been behind. I had an issue with a driving record that took almost all the money that I had for my taxes. Both houses that my business partner and I had went into business with to fix that person has vanished, so now I'm stuck with these two houses that I'm getting fixed at a snail's pace, and I'm damn near living off the dollar menu, even though I'm making decent money with the jobs I'm working because of everything going on. And there's other things that have happened. I don't want to bore anyone to death. My point is, when you say certain things, I never again will say I swear to God on anything. I might get thrown out of a courtroom someday for refusing to do so, but I will, I'm not doing so. Um, I think those kinds of things, and this is from first-hand experience, can be very, very dangerous. Um, there are other things I could say about it, but I, don't, I, I think I've said enough already. Um, I just strongly warn against such things this holiday season. And friends, that does bring us to the dum of the day. For those of you that don't know, at the end of each show, we have the dum of the day. And then once a month, we have the Dunks Cap of the Month Award show, where I make a Dunks Cap, and I make a Dunks Cap Award, and we send it to... <laughs> That came in loud. We send it to the stupidest people. They're often your leaders. We send it to the Pentagon, the FBI, the White House, to Al Gore, to judges, to individual people, and of course, uh, the, the "You Are an Idiot" song plays. 
Guns Cap of the Month Award comes uh, probably next weekend. I've been mailing them out once every two months, so I've got last month to mail out. Here's today's dumdy, friends. Missouri Town gets a new newspaper, the Uranus Examiner. Would you like to read the Uranus Examiner? Um, hmm. You know, I didn't give it the outright dunce cap of the month because I think this might might have been done on purpose by someone. In which case, it should, maybe should win the, the, the funniest joke of the month. I don't know. But I, I thought it was interesting to close the show with a cue the giggling. A small Missouri town has a new newspaper called the Uranus Examiner. KYTV, KY. Oh, KYTV, I had not noticed that before I went live, reports uh, the launch was announced on Wednesday, just days after Gatehouse Media said it was shuttering Pulaski County's local newspaper, The Daily Guide. The new publication's editor, Natalie Sanders, led the Daily Guide, left the, led the Daily Guide before leaving in June to start what she calls a fun paper. See what I mean? So we gave it a break there. A fun paper that will include local news and promote the tourist town of Uranus, which is pronounced the way any self-respecting class clown would say it. So, so much for the Uranus examiner. Uh, Uranus sits along Route 66 and is known for quirky attractions, including a fun shop. KY TV reports about a fun shop in Uranus. You're pretty much only going to hear about that on the show like mine. Also, the world's largest belt buckle, which, you know, might be taken off it Burke Back Mountain while you read the Uranus. I don't know. It ties into the first story, I guess. Luge Hardman, the mayor of nearby Waynesville, where the Daily Guide was based, says she thinks the innuendo surrounding the new publication's name will bring public ridicule. Um, I think the entire set of facts around it were ripe for just such a rimming. All right, friends, you've listened to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. If you'd like to donate to the show, you can do so at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Donate through PayPal. All the money that you give to me, I put towards a better show, like lights and all that crap around me. And uh, hit share, hit subscribe. Let me know if you like the new format where we go from politics to weird news, something that I've been trying to do. Good night, everyone. God bless.